special guest for an in-person interview in these strange days. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our very, very, very special guest, Mr. Patrick Berg. Thank you very much. Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I see, yes, we have our masks. We've just taken them off for this interview. Just We're now, socially distant. six feet apart, crew <laughs> six feet apart. So, how did you get into acting, Patrick? I don't know. So sometimes when I'm joking, I, I, I think about it. I first became an actor when I moved from uh, Aerosport Terrace to Drimna at the on Halloween. Yeah. And uh, I was surrounded by all these kids who asked me who I was and what my name was. And uh, they all had masks on. So I put on a mask and called myself Bernard McGuire. And I lived as a Bernard McGuire for about six years. Uh, but uh, probably it was in the family in some ways as well. My father, uh, in Carlo, he was a union organiser in Carlo, uh, farm workers in particular. And uh, in order to get them to, if you like, walk and talk comfortably, yeah. he set up a theatre in, uh, in Carlo called the Little Theatre. And that still exists to this yes. day. They just had their 75th uh, anniversary. And uh, then my brother Emmett was uh, uh, an actor. And uh, he was a great influence as well because I used to go and see him. Uh, the Gaiety and the first production of Brian Friel's Philadelphia Here I Come, for example. And my mother worked in the green room. <laughs> so it was, it was the, sort of theatre and, and acting in, yeah. in the family. And I, I also took great pleasure of uh, being involved with uh, the St. John Bosco Boys Club down in, uh, in Drimna at the time. Yeah. And they used to put on productions. And uh, I distinctly being the third spear car carrier on the left <laughs> a few times. <laughs> and, uh, Enjoyed it immensely, um, but on a serious level, when I went to London first uh, in uh, an area near Kilburn called West Hampstead, uh, I found a, uh, an underground uh, place. I was very interested in music as well and arts generally, and uh, I managed to get my hands on this place at the age of 17. and. Um, call it Mum's Underground. We used to put on plays and put on music and put on things like that. I would come back from Amsterdam, for example, and I used to play Amsterdam Busk and all of that. And I got a job up in Norway with a couple of mates of mine, Mick Flynn, for example, and we'd go up and do our work in, in, uh, in Oslo and Stavanger and places like that. And they were proper, and X was the, uh, the uh, agent that got us up there. And they were proper contracts. British standard equity contracts and I did them so enough times that at least 30 weeks I could get an equity card. Yes. <laughs> Gold dust. <laughs> and um, then the, the, probably the biggest break I got was, uh, do you remember Johnny Murphy? Got yes. That? Yeah. And he, uh, he lived in Germany as well and he was uh, doing, amongst the places I used to play was I used to go to, for example, to the King's Head in Island and the theatre there. And there was this, another similar theatre in, in, in uh, Kentish Town called the Falcon. And uh, Johnny uh, Morphy was doing a play there one night, Hatchet. I know. And, you know it well, yeah. And uh, I made a mind and I went down to see it. And at the interval, uh, uh, Shane Connerton came over to me. And he said, uh, are you an actor? I said, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and uh, he was working at the National Film and Television School. And a student of his, a guy called Niall Leonard, uh, was making his final uh, film at the student uh, in the National Film and Television School. It was a thing called No Man's Land. And uh, he said, I thought, you, you might be right for the, for the role. Yeah. So uh, lo and behold, uh, he said, would you meet him? And I met with Niall Leonard and I got the part. It's the best thing I ever did. It's a short half hour comedy. Niall Leonard went on to do make many other films and he worked for the BBC in Northern Ireland. He became a very important producer there. And I think he married a woman who made Fifty Shades of Grey. And uh, anyway, 
I got, had the the, uh, the video yeah. of uh, No Man's Land, and I brought it to my uh, agent who was doing my uh, music, and she said, "You've got to give that to. You should show that to Evan Dunson." I said, "Who's?" He says, "A theatrical agent across the corridor." And I brought the, 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 the thing across to Evan Dunstan. He said, I'll have a look at it. He looked at it and he said, he took me on. And very shortly after that, I got a call from Pat O'Connor. Yeah. And Michelle Gish, who was a casting agent at the time. And they were casting uh, another country with, uh, I think, Kenneth Branagh and various people. Gotcha. And I went in to see uh, uh, Pat. And I was very, very flattered because he said, he says, I'm disappointed as well because when I sat down, he says, "Well, Patrick," he says, "So I've got nothing for you in this movie, but I've seen your short. short. Where the hell have you been?" He says, and "I says, well, you know. and uh, Michelle Gay said, um, "Who's your agent?" And I mentioned the person who's my agent. Well, I won't say what developed. She said, "Well, we'll get you a better agent." <laughs> God help us. And uh, so I got a better agent. Although, one of the nice things about Evan was that he got me a part in, in a thing called, the, you know, the birthday party? Yeah, Harold Pinter. Harold Pinter's birthday party. And that took me all over England into Division Two's theatres. Yeah. And into, my most special memory was in, into the theatre in, in Richmond in Yorkshire. And uh, it's the oldest theatre in, in, in England. So I went all over England in, in the birthday party. Uh, but when I came back, lo and behold, the big one, this one. Yeah. Had you done Taffin and the Courier before that? Yes. There was a wonderful woman. Do you remember Anya O'Connor? Yes. She was uh, going out with uh, Gabriel Bourne at the time. And uh, she uh, were friends up in Hampstead as well. And they came to some various theatre productions I had done uh, in Hampstead. And... Uh, he got a gig in a film called The Courier. Yeah. You remember The Courier? I do. And in the, he um, he put my name forward for perhaps uh, it was she did really yeah. uh, to to meet with them, and I got the part in uh, in The Courier. Okay, but yeah. Okay. I always remember you had a very you had a, a very funny line. Someone said the drugs. You go, Uncle Val, the junkies <laughs> pal. <laughs> I remember my, that. My, my, and you were up on top of Wayne's Hotel. There was something about. Uh, oh yeah, that, that, that was my favourite moment. Yeah. Uh, the um, we had to walk across uh, the top of Wayne's Hotel, and I was going to pretend to shoot people down on O'Connell Street. Yeah. And um, we set up the shot walking towards the, the camera and uh, uh, Gabriel looked at me and he says, no, you should stand on that side, Patrick. And I said, okay. So I stood on that side. And as we walked towards the camera, I realised why, because I had to walk through a puddle of water. <laughs> 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 and it stole the scene, of course. Yeah. Everybody loves that scene where I walked through the puddle of water. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and I did, I did a film the best one that I got was uh, uh, playing an IRA terrorist uh, in a thing called Active Betrayal with uh, Lisa Harrow and Elliot yeah. Gould. Yeah. And that took me over to um, Australia, Lovely. which I, I was going international. Yeah. And uh, then I got Taffin with Pierce Brosnan. So I'd done a, quite a few uh, little films in Ireland, which was great. Yeah, which led to the one we had behind yeah. you. Yeah. So so this, this, this was a big break. and. Uh, Bob Rapelson was in, um, had come over to cast, and uh, if I may quote him, he was looking for the new Sean Connery and the new Peter O'Toole. And uh, luckily, uh, he found myself in Ian Glenn. Yeah. And not, not a bad comparison. Yeah. <laughs> so, was that a long gone process of getting it? Was, like it that? was, it was. It was. He was, he's a very serious, wonderful man. Uh, he's yeah. still, uh, still in touch with him. He lives out in Aspen, Colorado. And, um, He, he grilled us for a long time. We, we had to go and meet him several times. And, uh, but I remember the very, very first time I, I was to go and meet him was, uh, I was very nervous about it. I went to see Stephen Ray in the shock round. Remember that? Yes. He did a great version in the South Bank. And there used to be bookstalls outside the, the, uh, the theater. And uh, I walked and I was looking for a book called The Devil Drives, which was about Burton. And I couldn't, I looked all over London, I couldn't find it. And I was going to the theatre that night. 
and the bookstalls. And the last book on the bookstall, I lifted it up, and behind it was The Devil's Drives. And I was going to see uh, Bob Revels the next day. Picked it up, looked at the photograph, and I thought, oh, I can do him. Yeah. And, uh, but we it took a long, long time for him to... And he had us read together quite a bit. Sort of, as they call nowadays, chemistry reads. And, uh, yeah. Until, uh, to his credit, Ian, after about the fourth time, said, Bob, or get off the pot. This is making And uh, we were cast the next day. Yeah. Every actor must have been crazy for those parts. Yeah. I believe so. I think, yeah. I think everybody was hungry for their roles. Yeah. 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 And, but I was, I was very fortunate and uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Yeah. So you, you, you get the role you know, and you're going off to Africa. So what was it like even then making a movie like that in... Uh, what, around 89, 90 or something like that, wasn't it? 88, 89, yeah. 89. It was like the well, circus going to Africa. The, 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 the experience of being in Africa was extraordinary, there's no question. I mean, it was a life-changing experience. I mean, first of all, I mean, just physically, we were in, 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 in extraordinary circumstances. We were, I was working up in uh, the north of Kenya up with the, on Lake Turkana yeah. and uh, with the tribes people like the Almolo. The Almola lived on the lake and they had very little more than Nile perch. And the Rindili would live on, uh, they were nomadic, with, uh, and they would eat camel's milk and camel's blood yes. mixed in a, in a pot, all of which I sampled. The experience was extraordinary. I had one really, really funny experience, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was, I was trying to be a proper actor. So at, at lunchtime one day, and instead of uh, taking my lunch, I had a big scene in the afternoon. And I said, uh, right, I'll get serious. And I, I walked out. I thought I'd give myself a walk out at, at lunchtime and come back and be ready for the afternoon. So I took a 20 minute walk into the wilderness and then 20 minutes back and I left 20 minutes to spare. And after about 20 minutes out into the wilderness, this mirage appeared and it was this seven foot Turkana warrior with a spear. And he went to me. Oh, so I just, I had to go over to him. So I went over to him and he said, where are you from? I said, Ireland. He said, where? I said, Ireland. And he looked over his shoulder. He looked over his right shoulder. He said, somebody might be listening. He called me in closer. So I went in closer to him he said, are you still having problems with the Catholics and Protestants over there? <laughs> Our troubles have travelled. <laughs> Our troubles have travelled. And I see that um, Roger Deakins was a cinematographer. No, two oh, time, finally two-time Oscar winner. What was it like working with him? He was a genius, no yeah. question about it. He made, he made all of the African, uh, uh, if you like, extras and natives uh, so comfortable. And he got the best out of them. He got their performance out of them, as much as Bob did. Yeah. And he knew how to film it, and he, uh, he was just an extraordinary character. And, and he got so much confidence being around him. Yeah. Uh, he was just a great energy, great force. Yeah, yeah and he was did wonderful. you just like live practically out in the bush? Absolutely. Yeah. We were living in the bush. Uh, I, I, well, we shot we shot quite a lot in England as yeah. well, and uh, in Liverpool, for example. And uh, we, um, Fiona Shaw was played played my wife in it. Yeah. She, we, she was a wonderful inspiration and what powerful. And all of the, the, the classic. English actors, inclu yeah. including Leslie Phillips, are, are yeah. great fun with him. So you do it an, on its release, and it's a very popular, very well received movie. Did that help um, push you on into the studios then to lead to uh, Sleeping with the Enemy? Uh, no, it wasn't that easy. Was it not? No, I, it wasn't. But I think the moment, and this is an interesting story, I'll tell you. Yeah. There was a big boardroom, a bit similar to this, and uh, there must have been about, as you say, at least a dozen people around the table questioning me. And I went to the meeting and I got my eight piece, 12 piece suit on and in the middle of summer in, in LA to look the part. And uh, I went in and uh, there was asked questions all around the table and I answered them all diligently and correctly, I felt. And they said, yes, Patrick, okay, very well. We will be in touch. I said, thank you very much and I got up and went to leave and I walked straight into the broom closet. <laughs>
And uh, <laughs> the, uh, well, a little while later, Joe Rubin, the director, as you mentioned, uh, said to me, Patrick, that was the moment you got the movie. <laughs> My reaction coming out of <laughs> whatever, whatever came across my yeah. face, yeah. So did you get it? You yeah, it was great, great fun. And we, we was shot, that we in shot. Southern States somewhere we shot? Uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah, there's a lot of movies there. We were down there and they built that house, uh, which is almost a character in the movie. Yeah. And they, they built that house specially. The reason why they did was that they had found a house, it's called a place called Figure Eight Island off Wilmington. And uh, there was a bridge across to it. Uh, but there's some dodgy people on that island. Yeah. And they were a bit worried that if we filmed out there, they could easily put a car across and prevent filming and hold us to ransom. So yeah. they, they decided to, to build a house. And I'm glad they did, because it is such a character. And they were able to pull out walls and yeah. windows and all That's sorts of things while they were shooting. It was wonderful. Stuff. I hear you used done a, a rehearsal together. We sort of improv the silent rehearsal. Yes. Well, one of the things that was important to to the quality, if you like, of the, 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 the storyline and of the atmosphere of the film was that these people were together, but there was a, a chill between them. Yeah. And uh, um, obviously the, my character was very controlling and silence can be the most terrifying thing of all. So Joe did, he, he said part of, we didn't get a lot of rehearsal, but uh, Joe said uh, he, he said he's going to leave us together for half an hour and we were not to speak. And he make your cups of tea or whatever you want, but don't speak. And it, it was a very interesting experience. And so it, was, it wasn't a very elaborate, but it did work because we were able to, it was a sort of the, it's quite a small space, but you had to not really acknowledge each other's presence. It was a very interesting experience. The inspiration from that rehearsal was, was to keep quiet, keep away from each other and, and, and stay serious. Yeah. Also, during some of the rehearsals, one of them which I take a little bit of credit for is that um, in the script uh, there's a scene towards the end of the movie when I come back to find her and uh, in the script there was about a really powerful page, two pages of dialogue about how I really felt, having stayed away from each other, I, I express all of this. And uh, I said to Joe, I said, Joe, I can't. Having read it a couple of times, I said, I can't. I just can't keep the intensity up for that length of time. And uh, he said, well, what would you say then, Patrick? I said, I can't live without you. And I won't let you live without me. Joe, he said, Bruce Joe Rubin, who wrote it. Take that down. <laughs> and that was, that's the line in it. And probably, and if I dare say, one of the most powerful lines in it. And it's used in the trailer. Yeah, there you go. And it was probably is a better selling point than... Oh, absolutely. Two pages, pages of, two pages of dialogue. One yeah. line and one look in yeah. your business. Yeah, that's it. And then the movie came out and it's a huge hit. Enormous hit, yeah, thank God. Yeah. And did that push you even, even forward from? Well, yes, I think a lot of people don't, uh, I suppose it's obvious, but don't realise that you really are, you're, you really are as good as your last movie. Yeah. And you, there are lists in, a, in, in, uh, in, in, in the movie world. And you're either on the list or you're not on the list. And if your movie has made a hundred million, and I, that was the first movie to make a hundred million in, the, in a winter release, it, it, your name goes up to the top of the, the list, or was a, towards the top anyway. Yeah. And I, the other thing that happened at that time, and it was the beginning of um, cable. And uh, cable television, there was like HBO, Showtime, and various others, some of them still yeah. exist. And their, their, their advertising gimmick was that they were going to give you a new movie every week. So there was about five or six of these channels promising a movie a week. That's 50 movies a year each. Yeah. That's 250, and I did half of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so you go on, you do lots of other big movies, Patriot Games. That was fun to do, yeah. yeah. Uh, Harrison was great, yeah. Harrison Ford was great to work with, yeah. yeah. And Sean Penn, yeah. And then you, you sort of, do, you do a bit of everything, which is good, which is, which, one of the films that stuck out to me was uh, a film called Map of the Human Heart. An extraordinary Vincent film. Ward. Vincent Ward is an extraordinary director. And uh, it was very moving for me uh, for, on, on another level uh, was because uh, we shot it. Again, I was 
gone from Africa, but now I was up in the Arctic. Yeah. And uh, uh, while I was there, just before uh, I went, my father was ill. And uh, he, uh, he said, son, look after your work. And while I was uh, up there, he passed. And uh, it, I could have perhaps uh, got back on Concord and everything, spent a few minutes beside the grave, but I remember his words. The whole film is, is a little bit about those uh, sort of emotions. Yeah. It's a very, very powerful film. I think uh, Map of the Human Heart is another film that I would sincerely recommend people That's to That's what I was going to say. Is there any other one? A yeah. film like that, okay, you see, everyone definitely watched Mountains Moon, have seen sure. the map of you and Is there any other ones that you can think of that people should really seek out? Well, one I, I was fortunate enough to get a, a BAFTA for, which is called Morphine and Dolly Mixtures, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, and then a whole series of films I did where I did classic characters. I did uh, Dracula, Frankenstein, Robin Hood, of course. Yeah. And even Jesus Christ. Yeah, in Calvary by W.B. Yeats. And... Uh, a lot of those I, 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 I recommend. Yeah. Casanova. <laughs> Casanova. King Arthur. There you go. St. Patrick. St. Patrick, exactly. <laughs> so, oh, uh, Crassius, a bit of Roman as well. A bit of gladiator stuff. And Billy Bones. <laughs> so, uh, uh, that, was, uh, that was one of my favourites in Max, uh, Billy Bones, because it was Treasure Island. Yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, Long John Silver was played by uh, Jack Palance. And he was one of my favorite actors. My favorite TV of all time was Twilight Zone. I mean, I religiously watched the Twilight Zone on a Friday night. He, he, it was uh, vital. And then I got the offer to do the very last script ever written by Rod Serling wow. in the Twilight Zone. But this is when they rebooted it. They were, they, no, this was not, this was before. It was the end oh, was of the, the original the series. Was yeah. And the, the, the wife, uh, Rod Serling's wife, had found two two lost classics. And I got one, and uh, it was the story of a man uh, played by Jack Palance who had discovered the secret of eternal life. Yeah. And um, the natives uh, decided that they wouldn't let him go, so they cut his legs off. And uh, the, the, the film was me going down and talking to him to try and extract the, the, the information from him. And he had just come back from uh, doing uh, uh, curly in, in, in city slickers. In city slickers, and it was the first time I'd ever seen it done because he he had the, he had he had the idiot boards if you like on either side of the camera. He all the dialogue was his, so he was looking for <laughs> doing <the> Jack Blanche, <laughs> and uh, but it was he was wonderful to work with. And uh, then it must have been a year or two later, I got this thing, uh, Treasure Island, and. Um, on the first day on set, Jack came along and I was there and I said, how are you doing, Jack? And he said, who the, are you? I said, don't you remember me? He says, no, who are you? <laughs> I said, well, the last time I worked with you, you had no legs, and now you've only got one leg. <laughs> Run, the only man has got three legs. And he looked at me, Patrick. <laughs> Shane, like yeah. he, Jack Palance, and I was just, it was such an honor to work with such an icon. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. And if any of those characters, all those real-life characters, who do you identify with? Would you see yourself as a Robin Hood or um, uh, whoever? Well, there was a period... Not a Dracula. Uh, uh, well, uh, Helen yeah. says I should identify with Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> and Because uh, he was dark and handsome oh, yeah, and uh, yeah. irresistible. Yes. How do you compare like the Irish and TV and film industry now to what it was when you were starting out? I know nothing about it, yeah. but I, I enjoy it, yeah. and I, I, I've really enjoyed. Uh, I didn't expect to enjoy doing uh, things like uh, Red Rock and yeah. EastEnders as much as I, I have done. Yeah. And uh, but I've always taken a little bit of a, 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 a sideward kind of feel to to to. to and a lovely series coming out soon called uh, Southwesterlies. So what, yeah, what, what, really what is that? It's 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 about wind farms in, on the south coast. And uh, although we shot it in Wicklow, it's set, set on the south coast of Ireland and near Cork. And uh, that's a great, uh, should, be, should be interesting. Looking at your IMDb, it is gigantic, the amount of work. And uh, so what else? What new IMDb credits do we have? Well, there are, there are a few things coming out. I'm doing a, a film with uh, Ron O'Leary, 
in a sunken place. I've got a, a film coming out there, you'll find me with uh, Vanessa Redgrave coming out very soon. I have, as I mentioned, the South Westerlies on TV. Uh, I have a sort of a James Bondy character, which has been shooting next to called uh, Dark Sun, and uh, a couple of other pieces in the, in the, in, the, in between. Yeah. So you you're like you just, I'm busy. You, you I'm barely, I'm barely busy. busy. I mean, it's 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 a difficult time for everybody yes. to to negotiate their way around the circumstances. Uh, but uh, I think the business will hold together, and I think okay. we'll all work again. A couple of years ago, there was a beautiful little short in called Native. Oh, lovely, that was lovely, you. lovely piece. Yeah. No words, just you and a beautiful movie. People should try look out for it. They should. So, what attracted you to do something like that? Was it a first time director? Or? Well, I think I think yeah, there was a, yeah first time director, but it was the main the main thing was again because there was no words. I mean, if you can do something without words, it's 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 the highest form of, of the art really, and. Uh, I would encourage anybody, and I encourage all the young people to, to take their cameras and, and just point and, and edit. That's as simple as that, really. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that I would, I feel, I've, I've done a couple of westerns, a thing called Stolen Women, and I did a thing called Far Side of Jericho with, with Jason Connery, Sean Connery's son, uh, for example. And uh, I think there is a Western left of me yet. Yeah, so that brings me to my last question. What projects would you love to make? That's it. A Western. A Western, yeah. Yeah, because we were uh, all brought up in the Western Sun. Were you sent to the pictures on a Saturday well, afternoon? Absolutely. My two favourite films were The Fiend That Walked the West was probably my favourite film. And that was both a horror story and a Western. Lovely. And in black and white. And everything a man could want. <laughs> yeah, your local cinema. Well, Patrick, thanks a million for this. Good luck with your underground cinema. Yeah, thanks very much, Patrick. It's an absolute pleasure to, to have you here. And we'll get you and inside I hope, the I map. Hope, I, hope, I hope I'll have a film in it next year. Definitely. Most definitely. Cheers, brother. Thanks very much. Well, well.